Hello, anyone who is watching this early. The semi-finals for the 7th Star Sector Fleet Building Tournament will start in 3 minutes. Hello! How you doing, Fraudulent Cheddar? Great, well I'm happy to see you here. So we've got two rounds today, or two official rounds. We have Kissimmee's versus Vera, and we have Johan versus Safari John. And then we're doing a special um, exhibition match between Johan and Safari John that they they submitted slightly different fleets just for fun. That's gonna be a best of one. Yeah, it should be a good time. <laughs> We're up! Woo! Hi, Mac, please. How's it going? Things are going to be starting pretty soon. Hi. Yeah, so this is we're we're down to just a few players. We have the semifinals for both the upper and the lower brackets. I think it's going to be some good matches. Hello Heartlord. You are Safari John. Well, I will attempt to call you Safari John then. Do you have any predictions about today's matches, Safari John? As you are a competitor? No! Can't update username. Huh, that's a little funny. Alright, well, it is. <laughs> it is 9 UTC by my clock, so time to get things going. Welcome, everyone, to the 7th Fleet Building Tournament. These are the semi final rounds. This tournament has been set up and managed by Astraltor. Mission coding is by Tartaflit, based on Dark Revenant's work. And announcement. The lower bracket finals will be next Monday at 7.30 UTC on Nemo Naimo's channel. And we are going to be soliciting some exhibition matches from the Star Sector community in order to fill out that stream, as there's only one official match in it. Here's the, the problem with elimination tournaments. So let's get started. First up, we have... Vera with Vera's Victors against Kissimmee's with Kissa and Co. Space Repo. Vera's Victors, it looks like it's the same fleet it has been this entire tournament, but let me double check. Overlay. Always with the overlay. Both me and Nemo. Always with the overlay. Okay. So, first match is Vera with Vera's Victors versus Kissimmee's with Kissa and Co. Space Repo. That's a weird cadence. I should stop doing that. All right. Let's take a quick look at Vera's fleet for those who haven't seen it before. I think it is unchanged. Let's see. We have Sabos, Harpoons, Reapers, ECCM, Expanded Missile Racks, and Hardened Shields with 20 caps. And the weapon groups are all linked up, as you can see. Then is his Wasp Falcon P 
which is very similar, same weapon groupings, only with converted hanger instead of hardened shields. And one of these, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of these to fill out the entire um, limit of modular fighter, be fighter wings in the tournament. Then we have Strike Omens, my favorite omens, with an AM Blaster, a Reaper, hardened subsystems, unstable injector, hardened shields, and resistant flux conduits. With 10 caps and hardened shields, this omen has 10,000 effective hit points, which is a little obscene. There are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 of those, bringing us up to a total of 1 falcon without a, without a hangar bay, 7 falcons with hangar bays, and then 6 omens. And I'm just going to reset, because I did look at weapon groups. Up against them is Kissa & Co. Space Repo. And I see more Falcon Ps, so people are, have been copying Vera's Falcons left and right. Let's take a look at this fleet. I see two Albatrosses with Hammer Class Torpedoes, Plasma Flamer, and Ion Pulsar. Interesting. Short-range guns. And they need to be, because this is a safety override ship. This is going to make, make the ship significantly faster, have much better dissipation, but cut its range down significantly. So with safety overrides, reinforced bulkheads, and blast doors built in, this destroyer has a pretty solid 8,000 hull, and it's built-in damper field. And not to mention flak drones, so these probably are here to distract and defend against missiles. And these are border wall class albatross destroyers. We have the Napalm Gunship with one Assault Chain Gun, one Plasma Flamer, Safety Overrides, Reinforced Bulkheads, and some Light Dual Machine Guns. Cool. Next up, here's the Falcon P. You wouldn't download a Falcon. <laughs> so here we have the, you wouldn't, uh, piracy, stealing designs, you wouldn't download a Falcon cruiser. So these look similar, but not the same as Vera's Falcons. Let's take a detailed look at the loadout. I see two Sabos, two Harpoons, and Ion Torpedoes. So Ion Torpedoes instead of Reapers. Expanded Missile max Racks, Converted Hangar Bay, Hardened Shields. So no ECCM for this, for this ship. So they've dropped ECCM um, and gotten Hardened Shields instead. They are using a Wasp the same. Let's take a look at the weapon groups, and I'll need to reset after doing this. Oh, okay, so this fleet is using a linking trick. They have linked their light mini blasters, which are point defense, to the Sabos, probably in an effort to make the Sabos fire all the time. So this is a technique that's been used in past tournaments, where by combining a weapon and a missile, you force the missiles to fire. The harpoons are likewise linked to get them to fire eight at a time, and the ions are also linked. All right, I need to do a reset before I forget. Oh, Vera. Hi, Vera. Exclamation points there. Yeah, these are nasty. These are nasty Falcon Peas. This might be a slight refinement on the Vera design. We'll have to see. I see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You wouldn't download a Falcon. Falcons. And we have some omens. These are smite omens, and they are a different design. Let's see. We have an IR pulse, a burst PD, hammer with expanded missile rack. So four hammers each. Ten caps, but no hardened shields, so less effective shield hit points. Oh, excuse me. Sorry about that. Less effective shield hit points than the other omens, uh, but still quite tough. One, two, three, four, five of those. So let's see. Eight plus five, seven plus five is 30. So this, this caps out the 15 ship limit. So there's one more ship on this side of the fleet. All right. You're late again. Late, late, late. Oh no. We have just finished going over the variants. We have Vera with the same fleet versus Kiss Kissimmee's with this nasty new Falcon P variant. We will see which one is the victor in this best of three match. Let's watch the fight. So we are back to Battle Space 14. For those of you who watched last round, we had switched to Battle Space 1, but in retrospect, while we liked that it only had one capture point, we didn't like that it was so small. So... 
Yeah, we're we're back to Battle Space fourteen. Perhaps, uh, perhaps future ver future tournaments will create some new battle spaces of our own, but we couldn't really be bothered this time. All right, Sabos are away. Ooh, initial barrage, no overloads. There's the first overload. So Vera has gotten the first overload. Um, the, a bunch of harpoons were destroyed. A bunch of harpoons were just destroyed by the wasps, but it was not enough. Oh, we have overloads on both sides. So here is the first counter punch. That is a Vera Falcon down. Reapers fired. Ooh, I think a Reaper just bounced around and, and managed to, like, spin the brawler around and destroy it. Okay, we have an overload. Overload on both sides, but this ship is completely surrounded. It's going to pop instantly. And over here, it's just a couple harpoons, no real damage. Ooh, on this side, three of these strike omens. The strike omens, um, they ganged up and destroyed a Kissimmee's Falcon. This is an incredibly deadly fight. Oh, we have another overload. Ion torpedoes with the disable. Um, not enough firepower coming in for the kill, though. Another exchange. Oh, 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 you just hit your ally with two Reapers and overloaded them. Luckily, luckily, there's not much around to capitalize on. Otherwise, that could have been really nasty. Let's see, ion torpedoes away. And that's a hit, a hit, an overload. On this side, there are tons of tons of harpoons. Another overload. Um, wow, this is just a... Oh, look at that bounce. That Reaper just bounced off a of friendly ship's backside. Oh, Omen! Omen fires a Reaper for the kill. It looks like Vera is going to win this match in, in kind of an insane dice roll. Um... Honestly, there's there's very little rhyme or reason. Some very small changes in ship position can either doom or save a ship. Woo! Okay, so it looks like... Yes, Kissimmee only has a few small ships left. I think Vera has come out on top in this round. Yeah, this has turned into the Falcon P tournament. Um, yeah, very good damper field there. Ate a lot of uh, ate a lot of sabos. There have been quite a few lucky lucky happenstances for Vera's fleet this time. I've seen um, I've seen reapers bounce off of Vera's ships a little bit. I saw a reaper basically bounce off a brawler, do a 360, and hit it from behind, which is a crazy thing to happen. We will see how the next tourney, the next round goes. So these are best of three, and we're going to switch the order. So Kissimmee's will be on bottom for the next round. Plasma Famer is doing okay. Um, I wonder why there aren't more Sabos firing. There are some Sabos. Okay. The AI has some missile preservation in instinct. I would say that the Sabos are effective, but that the harpoons are the harpoons are what really makes this fleet shine. Because we've seen fire Falcon Peas with just Sabos without the uh, harpoons, and they weren't nearly as effective. Alright, well this is um This is gonna end sooner or later. This ship is holding out quite well, because the Falcons, for whatever reason are not firing their missiles. I think they're they're conserving missiles, which happens. There's an AM blaster shot, there's a Reaper sh shot, um, a couple wasps and beams, and that'll do it. There we go. So, uh, some losses, particularly among the Omens, but a solid victory for Vera in the first match. Let us switch the player order. I'm going to reset again, just in case, and... Round two of Kissimmee's versus Vera. So from the south, Kissimmee's fleet. Wasp Falcon Peas using Ion Torpedoes instead of Reapers, and some linked weapon groups between the Mini Blasters and the Sabos, and some Omens and some Albatrosses.
All right, so here is the engagement. Let's see what happens this time. Oh, it's, it's again, it's a, three Falcons um, beating up on one, but the Wasp, the Wasp Minefield stopped it from immediately dying. Um, that's uh, pretty pretty good there. Oh, uh, Vera has an overload as well. Let's see, so that's one Kissimmee's Falcon down, one Vera Falcon down. Over here, Vera has another overload. Um, ion torpedoes are coming in, and another overload. God, it's just such a roulette. It's just such a, like, who's going to get the overload? Who's going to manage to retreat? Like, the fact that this Falcon retreated and managed to survive its overload is actually a really big deal. Really big deal. And again, again it happens over here. Barely any hull left. On this side, yep, that was going to be a kill. So we have a lot of overloads. Another overload from a Vera ship. But now there aren't enough friendlies in the area. Oh, and there's that omen. The omen actually completely protected that Falcon from that first strike wave. None of those, none of those shots hit. Uh, here's another one. And it managed to protect it just enough for it to survive. Um, let's see. On this side, again, another Vera Falcon just barely manages to survive. There's another overload. A couple more harpoons, and that's a kill. Now here is locally a 2v1. 2v1 in favor. Oh, dodges the Reaper. And it tanks, it tanks the harpoons, but it doesn't overload. That's actually a really good play by the AI. So now we have a Vera Falcon surrounded... Oh, oh, but more Veyras are coming in to help. That's some hits. Is this going to be an overload? Yep, that's an overload. And there come the Harpoons. The Harpoons are really what finishes the job. Oh, Veyra overload. And... Veyra kill. The Sabo's actually retargeted there. Let's see, how's the rest of the fleet going? Uh... So there's two Kissimmee's Falcons over here. So the Falcon counts are even. This is going to go down to the wire. This really is going to go down to the wire. This Vera Falcon is fluxed up and fighting. Oh, that's that overload is bad news. Albatrosses have damper shields. If it had managed it, it probably would have survived a lot better. Oh, that'll that'll do it. That'll do it. So there are three Vera Falcons down here. There's two Kissimmee's Falcons up here that are just chasing this omen, and honestly, they're probably using a lot of sabos in shotgunning that shotgunning that omen. And you can see that with the hardened shields and the 10,000 effective shield hit points, the omen can actually survive a lot of uh, a lot of abuse. I think let's see. Ah, yeah, Vera has 3 falcons to 2 falcons. And this albatross is not going to last much longer, I think. Oh, that's the reaper for the kill. So those linked reapers, one got caught on the shield, but the other one got the kill. All right, so over here we have one Vera Falcon is coming up against two Kissimmee's Falcons, but the omen distracted for just long enough. These omens are really proving their worth, even though they are dying. Yeah, so let's see. So this, unfortunately, can't get the kill fast enough, and now it's two on one. There's the overload. This looks like it's going to be another Vera win for a 2-0. Um, I will say, while it looks like Vera will win here, you know, I've seen enough of these matches to know that this could have gone either way in both matches. Tiny little variations in how the ships are arranged at front, whether or not a falcon can get behind its allies, um, whether or not an omen can shoot down the incoming harpoons after an overload, all those things can drastically affect the outcome. But we have seen that Vera's designs have prevailed. The omens played their part. They distracted the falcons. We had two Kissimmee's falcons up here chasing one omen. That might have been the difference down south, but they weren't. Let's see. I see... Yep, there's the overload. There's some harpoons. The AM blaster shots are going to be coming in soon. There's one AM blaster shot. Another AM blaster shot. Devastating EMP, and I think the wasps... Yep, the wasps finish it. And that is it. 
So, a much closer battle this time. Vera sneaks by with five ships remaining and heavy damage on those ships, but Vera does manage to get the win. So Vera has pulled through and will be in the finals. It's possible if Kissimmee does very, very well in the um, lower bracket finals on Nemo Nemo's channels next Monday at 7.30 UTC, that we could have a rematch of Kissimmee versus Vera, but Kissimmee has several fights to win before we can get to that point. Next up, we have the lower bracket semifinals with Johan versus Safari John. So I see Johan with Don't Run Into the Mines, boys, with Omens and Falcon Peas. Who would have guessed it? So Johan with Omens and Falcon Peas and a Apogee. Nice. Let us take a look at the variants. And I will look at the weapon groups and I'll have to do a reset. So we are here we have Falcon Missile Only, Cruiser. Definitely not, definitely not stolen. Yeah, we're banning Falcon Peas next tourney. We're, we're doing something to stop Falcon Peas next tourney. This is ridiculous. Let's see. I see PDs, Sabos, Harpoons, Reapers, Wasps, Expanded Missile Racks, and Converted Hanger. 30 capacitors this time. So like before, um, the Vera copycats have taken off ECCM. Let's take a look at the weapon groups. Okay, we have we have linking. So this is the same weapon group as Vera's. All right, I'm going to do that reset. And let's look at the rest of the ships. So this is the Falcon missile only. Next, we have Omen Ion Pulse. And as a reminder, people are only allowed to ch change out one variant. So these omens have been since the beginning. These were a submitted variant. They have an IR Pulse for hard flux damage, an Ion Cannon, and Ion Torpedoes with Stabilized Shields, Hardened Shields for that glorious 10,000 effective shield hit points. One, two, three, four of those. Uh, another one, two, three, four, five of the Falcon Peas. Another Omen. Here we go, Apogee Plasma. This has a Plasma Cannon, two Tac Lasers, Heavy Bursts in the back, Burst PDs on the side, ITU, and Stabilized Shields, a Locust, and a Sabo. Let's take a look at the weapon groups. Uh, no shenanigans, just standard weapon groups, and 20 vents. And one more Falcon. So in total, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 Falcons, which fills up the fighter allowment by the tournament. Tourney me? Tourney. Tournament. And 1, 2, 3, 4, 5... Six omens. One, two, three, four, five. No, five omens. All right. Up against Johan's fleet, we have the Falcon per Poachers of Safari John. So we have Falcons with Wasps and Shades. So Shades have been chosen to be the escorts instead of omens. Let's take a look at these Shades. So these are PD Shades. They have one Sable, one Swarmer, and Blaster two IR pulses, and of course, their built-in EMP emitter. Ten caps, eight vents, so they have a long operational time in phase, and hardened subsystems. And we have one, two, three, four, five of those shades as escorts. Next, we have the poacher. <laughs> I like how people have been putting, for names, they've been putting, like, you wouldn't steal a falcon. I really love that name. I really love that name. However, I see that the weapons are slightly different in that it only has one PD laser. So this has the ECCM, it has the expanded missile racks, the converted hangar, uh, more caps, so it, it has some more caps than previously. Oh, and it's using more Sabos instead of Reapers. So yeah, it looks like this is another Vera variant. So the um, Kissimmee's was using ion torpedoes and some linking shenanigans. It looks like Safari John is using more Sabos, and yes, so all the Sabos are linked, the Harpoons are linked, but the PD is by itself, so there's no, there's no um, gun and missile linking tricks going on. And doing the reset. There's the reset. With everyone using, with everyone using Falcon Peas, I have to do those resets. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of the Poacher Falcons. So. Uh, a conceptually simple fleet. 
the Stolen Falcons, and Shades for Escorts. Another reset. So, let us see which approach to Falcon accompaniment <laughs> shall survive. Will it be the Falcons and Omen and Apogee, or the Falcons and Shades? Johan versus Safari, Safari John, round one, fight. We need to get those graphics working again. There were nice fight graphics before, with like the names showing up. We got rid of those because we didn't want to muck with the code too much. Anyway, back to back to the battle. From the south, Falcon Peas. From the north, Falcon Peas. Wasps. I did check the weapon groups, and I did do the resets. Okay, so here we have the initial exchange. And it is inconclusive, actually. No other overloads on either side, and both Falcons are backing off with other Falcons coming in. Ooh, this one is about to get quadruple teamed. Oh, but it gets the overload before that happens. Here come the Harpoons, and here's a North Overload. So that is one Falcon P down over here. Um, some Ion Torpedoes from the Omens. Not enough for a kill. Is there going to be a second Barrage? No, that Falcon survives. Over here, we have Overload on Overload. Uh, north side has the local concentration. There are some some Harpoons coming up. Oh, but the Shade is actually playing the same role as the Omen with its EMP emitter. It's uh, shooting down Harpoons. Let's see. Shades are skirmishing over here. They do have Iron Pulses, which will slowly, slowly whittle down shields. They certainly are distracting the enemy. Oh, that's a lot of a lot of missiles. Debris doing a good job blocking. Not really sure why those harpoons were fired. Nothing nothing high on flux. Apogee is yeah, Apogee's just kinda chilling out. So this is actually very unusual for Falcon on Falcon fight. We have battle lines. Oh look at this ship. This ship has I wanna check this. Can we see the whole number? No we can't. But this ship has it will die to a single, single bit of damage. It is so low, so low on hull. Yeah, this is unusual to see a battle line. We normally don't see battle lines with Falcon Peas because things are too busy dying. Oh, speaking of dying, yeah, that's no good. Let's see. Sabo support from its friend. There we go. That's the kill. Barely enough damage before the overload. Oh, the Apogee overloaded. Apogee overloaded over here. Yeah, the harpoons are just gonna the harpoons are just gonna kill it. Yeah. Oh, but it looks like a shade got destroyed by the death explosion. So that is a shade that got lost through happenstance. That happens to phase ships. Ah, so alright. Okay. So this this fleet has been pushed to the bottom map edge. That's very interesting. I wonder what the personality of these Falcons is. I can't I can't check personality with, without looking at the game files. But unlike the last battle, which looked like it was reckless on reckless and everything just murdering as fast as it can, these ships are quite willing to back off. Now we'll see how CR plays into this backing off, because the shades, they do have hardened subsystem, but um, when they phase, they consume CR faster. Oh, that's interesting! So that might be why this has all those Sabos is because normally four Sabos launched by a Falcon is not enough to overload a Falcon, but ten Sabos is enough to overload a Falcon. Huh, that, that might be what's going on there. That might be why they picked... Um, oh, oh, but there are, those, there are the Reapers showing why they're so good. So the ten Sabos might be so that they can overload a Falcon in one barrage. I'm really not sure. Ooh, shotguns on the omen. I mean, omens are made of paper, but it really needed to raise its shields for that. There is the harpoon exchange. The sabo exchange, I should say. Ah, reapers missed. Falcons, when they activate their system, and you can tell it was activated because of the heavy glow, they are too nimble and can dodge the reapers. By numbers, it looks like... Yeah, it looks like north side is 
probably going to win this. Um, whether it is the Shades or the Sabos, I really can't tell. But Northside has a strong numerical advantage. Five on three at this point. And that's five on two. And this has no hit points. It's going to die to a Sabo Barrage. <laughs> As Gormengong says, Falcon P versus Falcon P. In a shocking reversal, Falcon P wins. Well, I think this this round looks like it's over. I'm going to keep, next round, I'm going to keep an eye out to see whether the extra Sabos are allowing, are allowing them to overload in a single volley. Because that, that might make the difference. Probably, <laughs> oh, the wasps. The wasps took it out. No hull. The um the max Sabo variant is probably significantly worse worse versus other ships because it has sixteen thousand less HE DPS, but against Falcons where it's that first overload and then the harpoon barrage is what gets the kill. This might be a superior Falcon hunting variant. Uh, inconclusive that time because the because the Sabo is um. The Sabos, uh, a couple of them lost it. And there we go. Is that it? Nope, there's there's some ships left somewhere. A couple of omens are still kicking around. I am going to speed up time a little bit. I think this is this is it. The omens are low on CR. There's one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, very few Falcon casualties. Quite a bit of hull damage on some of them. But uh wow, quite a bit of hull damage on some of them. But only one only one of these falcons died. Alright, here comes the shotgun of Sabos. If I remember correctly, yeah, no hardened no hardened shields on these uh, omens. And there we go. I think a single harpoon is enough to kill a um an omen. Maybe not quite enough, but omens only have seven hundred and fifty hit points. All right, so that was actually a very solid, a very solid win um, for Safari John. Surprising. All right, let's do another reset and switch the sides. All right, so let's do this again. Yeah, round two. Let's see, I did switch. Yes, I did switch the sides. I did reset. Round two of Safari John's Falcon Poachers. Yep, interesting. So these these might be specifically anti Falcon P Falcon P's versus Johan's don't run don't run into the mines. Round two, fight. I'm gonna try to keep an eye both on the initial Sabo engagement and also I want to see how these shades do. I suspect the shades might be really working against the Falcons. Also, hidden from us while we're looking at the game is the personalities. There might be some personality tuning happening here to make these more effective. All right, so here's the initial exchange. Um, quite a few Sabos have been killed by the mines. Oh, overload. There's one overload. Um, let's see. God, that's so many, so many harpoons. Um, let's see. Are enough harpoons going to get shot down? I don't think so. Nope, that is a kill. Um, and, oh, a reaper hit this falcon. That's another kill. So, actually, so, Safari John has already lost more falcons so far than they did the first fight. So, this is going quite differently. Um... We'll see if we'll see if changes continue, but so far this is not going as well for Safari John. Ooh, wreckage! Wreckage gets quite a bit of protection. There's that lucky swing. Oh, it's not going to be enough though. That is so many missiles. Yep. Okay. How are things going over here? Another Sabo opening. So this is six Sabos instead of four Sabos. And there's a little bit of hard flux. 
So it's actually it's not quite enough for the overload, but you see how the the small mounts fired before the the large ones had a chance to reload. That got the overload faster than it would have been able to. It would have had to wait till then for the overload. So that might be what's going on with these sabos. They might be specifically designed for anti-falcon work. Oh, Shade got shotgun to death there. It looks like it unfazed in a bad time. Sorry, Omen got shotgun to death. I read my messages wrong. Apogee is fighting. Let's see, it's taking some sabos, but its flux is uh, pretty good. It's um, it's not pointing at the Falcon though, and it hasn't fired its main gun yet. All right. Oh, it's not firing its plasma cannon. There it goes. There it goes. I think this the ship doesn't have enough dissipation. It doesn't have enough dissipation to fire its plasma cannon. This is not a very successful variant if it can't fire its plasma cannon. So there's the harpoons. Yeah, the Apogee, the Apogee just didn't have enough flux. If it can't fire its main gun, there's no way it's going to be able to take off. Uh, oh, and its main gun is actually also disabled by EMP or damage. Let's see what's happening in the rest of the fight. Um, shade down. Shade killed by an omen. Ooh, and there goes those Reapers. But just barely dodging. Barely dodged the Reapers. You know, I recall that Vera's ships with ECCM, the Reapers are going to travel faster. So Vera's Reapers will hit more than this Falcon's Reapers. That could, again, be a significant factor. Omen down. The Apogee has survived. There's a couple small fights happening on the wings. Looks like a Falcon is coming back. Ooh, this really, it really depends how these engagements go. If these Falcons gang up, they could win. But if they get... Hmm, this is interesting. This is very interesting. So now there's actually been a lot of fire from the um, Plasma Cannon. But there we go. There's some damage. Is this out of Sabos? The Smalls are out of Sabos. Oh, the Sable Pods are disabled by the damage. I think this Apogee might get a kill. And this Falcon has its engines turned. Oh, it's really close. It's really close to death. Oh, look at that. It's just a sliver. So that is panic fire from the Harpoons because it's so low on health hit points. Yeah, the Omen is just going to... The Omen is just going to... Fire those off. The Shades... So this has been a slower match... The shades are getting critical malfunctions. So these omens, whose CR is still in the 50s, are, are going to outlast these shades and rejoin the battle. I think we might have a split match. I think that we may have a split match. Exciting. So the Apogee, now that the now the Falcons are out of Sabos, they're actually they're not that um they're not that 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 deadly because <laughs> they can't force the overload. Although I do see Sabos in these front pods. So it does have some Sabos. Ooh, and there's the burst. Let's see. I think the overload is going to end before another burst can get it. Nope, I was wrong. Now this this Falcon has very few hit points. Yep, taken out by the Sabos. Oop, sorry about that. I don't think this Falcon can win this. So it's firing its Sabos. And the Flux is high on the Apogee. But it has support from the Omen. That Oh, no, no, there's the Overload. The Omen stopped just, just enough Harpoons. So this Falcon is being hesitant 
to fire its sabos because it feels like it has numerical superiority, but it needs to fire them. If it doesn't fire them, um, the Apogee might not survive. Ah, uh, but here's some more Falcon Peas coming in. There's the sabos, there's the overload, and there's some harpoons. No harpoons from this one. The AI gets a little funny at the end of matches when it comes to missile conservation. And there we go! So, very different outcome. With Johan winning round two. So this is going to go down to round three. Now, just in case there is some difference between north and south in terms of performance, I am going to roll a die with an online dice roller on my side. And if it comes up a one, I'm going to switch the round back. If it comes up to two, I'm going to keep it as it is. It's a two, so I am not going to be switching the sides back. Probably that won't make a difference, but just in case it does, well, it was um, it was random chance. So round three, Safari John versus Johan. Fight. Falcon Peas versus Falcon Peas. Which one will win? I enjoy all the phasing and unfazing as the Shades try desperately not to get run over by the Falcons. Alright, here is the first engagement. Wasps wasps to the front. Um, mines did kill a few Sabos, and that's enough for the instant overload. So the extra Sabos um, have gotten one overload. Let's see if the Escorts are enough to save that Falcon. Does not look like it. So that is... Overload over there. Ooh, another overload on this side. So that is instantly two kills. But it is going to eat one in return. But there's not enough Falcons in the area. We'll see whether these... Can these Harpoons get here in time to secure the kill? Yes. Yes, they do. And <laughs> But they paid for it with another Falcon. So, oh, God. This, this match is so, so fast. So last match... Uh, the shades kind of got CR'd out. Everything was kind of slow. This match is a incredibly fast slaughter, to be perfectly honest. Wow, this is uh, this is not going well. This is not going well at all. I'm not sure what the difference was because I didn't change the player order top to bottom. But whatever random chance has caused this outcome, this is going to be a steamroll. Ooh. Well, there's there's the random chance in all AI tourneys for you. Sometimes you can have a good fleet, you can win your first match, and then just get crushed. And that is how it goes. Oh, only one Falcon left. So this poor ship, the NDNS Thrall, can it solo the entire enemy fleet by itself? Yeah, not, not very likely. Okay. We will... I won't speed up time just yet, because I want to see how this Falcon does. Oh, barely, barely no overload from the Reapers there. Omen down, omen down, that shotgun. And again, now that we're down to the last ship, there's a little bit of hesitancy to fire missiles. That's just part of the AI's missile conservation logic. Um, usually works pretty well. Oh, there's that overload, but uh, last Falcon, so nothing to capitalize. Harpoon swarm, and there we go. Is, is that it? Is there anything left? Uh, there's one omen left. On this side, the Omen is doing a pretty good job against the Shade. In 
effect. Is it going to get the kill? Really, really close, but probably no kill for that omen. Unless this shade uh, unfazes again. And there's the omen down. That is it. So a brutal, brutal tiebreaker. Um, one falcon and one shade destroyed that time. So that is it for the main matches. However, we have one exhibition match. So Safari John approached us and and Johan agreed. They wanted to see how this um this Paragon and Apogee they wanted to see how this fleet fared against Johan's fleet. So we have a exhibition match, doesn't count for the rankings, between Safari John and Johan. So let's take a look at the variants in this exhibition match. So here we have a Paragon, so we'll see how a Paragon does against the Falcon P Swarm. This looks like a pretty standard Paragon with auto pulses, heavy needlers, tachyon lances, and some ion beams in front. Stabilized, hardens, flux distributor, expanded magazine, accelerated shields with a ton of vents and decent caps. And we got some tack lasers and some hornets. So we've seen this Paragon before. This is, um, this is Safari John's Paragon that they like. Um, this is a slightly different Apogee than the one we just saw. I see Plasma Cannon, I see Bursts, I see Heavy Bursts, Locust, and a Salamander. I think that was a, I think that was a Sabo before. With Stabilized Shields and ITU, the Stabilized Shields make a diff big difference, and they're going to help that Plasma Cannon keep firing. We have some Support Frigate Tempests with Phase Lance and Ion Beams, Advanced Optics and ITU, so quite a long range on the Ion Beams. Events and Caps. One, two, three, four of those. And those are versus... I think it's the same Johan's fleet. Yeah, this is the same fleet. So... So this is an exhibition match. Safari John and Johan both agreed to it. We're just going to do the one. Unless it's like really close and people really want to see Festo 3 for it. But, uh, oops, that was the wrong camera mode. Let's see how this plays out with a Paragon. And Paragon lumbering up with the Apogee right next to it. If they play it smart and they allow each other to vent, this will do really well. If the Apogee blocks the Paragon's firing lines, this is going to go really poorly. Okay, so here we see some Heavy Needler fire, and the Ion Beams are going to pierce the shields of that omen. Tachyon Lances have a nasty habit of popping omens because they can pierce shields, but I noticed that these Tachyon Lances are wasting a lot of shots. Okay, so the... Here is the Paragon um, Fortress shielding a little bit. Unloading onto the Falcon. It's done some damage. Here are the Reapers. Here is the... Oh, is it going to catch those Reapers? It did catch the Reapers. Oh boy, Fortress Shield, proving its worth, but the Flux is going up, and the Ion Torpedoes can heavily, heavily punch through. Uh, oh yeah, that, that's it. That's it. Paragon's fluxed out. Um, it can't raise its shields enough. It's surrounded. Apogee's really doing nothing down here. Uh, it's overloaded. Paragon is... Um, surrounded and it's shield flickering its best but it can't do it apogee is dead oh no not quite apogee is still alive paragon is overloaded um these ships should fire their reapers except they really don't need to uh there goes the paragon and there goes the apogee okay this is over um exhibition match exhibition match has shown that the paragon could tank for a little while, but without without any ability to lower its shields, it dies like any other capital when it's surrounded by six cruisers. <laughs> Especially six cruisers, which is such high burst firepower. Okay, we'll, we'll play this out, I guess. I'm just going to accelerate time. <laughs> Honestly, um, 
it seemed to me like the Paragon actually did worse than the Victory did earlier, but uh, that's a that's a uh, hard comparison to make. There's the shotguns from all the um, from all the sabos. More shotguns. Yeah. Yeah. This is this is only going to end one way. If nothing else, the Tempest could get out CR, and so I am going to speed up these Falcon Peas. Yeah. So exhibition match, shame. Shame on you, Safari. However, that is it. We have seen our first split decision. However, in the end, Safari John with their Falcon Poachers and their Ultra Sabot lo Sabo loadouts have pulled through. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you, everyone, for dropping by. It was great to see so many people here for semifinals with so few matches. Uh, we will be having the next round of the tournament will be on Nemo Nemo's channel, Monday at 7.30 p.m. UTC. We are... Um, it only has one official match because of how the double elimination bracket works. So we are asking people to come onto the Discord, say hi, and um, submit some fleets for exhibition match matches. Talk to me, talk to Astralter, talk to Nemo. Um, give us a little material for the stream. <laughs> or give us, some, give us some suggestions. Ah, thanks. I'm glad you all like the stream. And that's it. Have a good rest of your day, and I'll catch you next Thursday, and I'll catch you watching Nemo's stream. Bye now. Oh wait, should we raid? We should raid someone. It's always fun to raid people. So let me take a look at the Star Sector Twitch. Let's see who's playing right now. Yeah, let's let's see who's playing, and if any of them look cool. Um, let's see. I see Hans Gruber. I see Dark Link, Your Bunny, and Digital Tectonics. Um, let's go say, say hi to Hans Gruber. I've seen Hans Gruber around before. Okay. Slash raid. Hans. Oops, that's a capital H. I actually don't know if capitalization makes a difference. Gruber. So there we go. I hope you all have fun on the new channel. Let's go see what's up. Rating.